Okay, you guys, today we're talking about minerals. Chapter 9, what are minerals? And, and I mean, that's what it comes down to. We're, we're, we're looking at minerals and how they make up the Earth's crust. And, and what's, what's awesome is that, um, and I've said this a million times over, if we have it, we either grow it or we mine it. And minerals are one of those things that uh, make up uh, a good portion of our Earth's crust, and we utilize them in everyday society. So today what we're going to do, uh, we're going to talk about uh, what a mineral is, define it, to, uh, distinguish between uh, the two main groups, silicates and non-silicates, uh, identify uh, different elements that make up the majority of minerals, uh, we'll end up talking about the six different types of non-silicates. And then uh, we'll look at the, the arrangements of the bonds in silicon and oxygen within different uh, silicate minerals. So we'll go ahead and get started. So what's a mineral? Uh, minerals are uh, the building block of our Earth's crust. And uh, to look at that, um, we have to understand a couple of different things. Uh, and whether something is organic or inorganic is very important. And so uh, organic means that it was once living or is living. Uh, and inorganic is something that's non-living. And so a mineral is inorganic. And uh, by that, um, it is a natural thing. It has a crystalline structure. Um, chemicals make up element or minerals, and uh, their basic building blocks, just like everything else, is is elements, or in this case, also a group of elements come together and make compounds. Um, so when we look at these things to determine whether or not something is a mineral, um, we have a couple of checkoffs, right? So. In order to be a mineral, we have to be able to answer all four of these questions. And the first question is, is the substance inorganic? Yes or no? Um, if it is organic, it's not going to be a mineral. If it's inorganic, okay, there's a shot there. And so if we can say, okay, it's inorganic, check, and we're good there. The second question we have to ask is, does it occur naturally? Um, there are lots of ways that we can now combine elements in the laboratory um, and in the manufacturing setting. And if a substance is manufactured, it is not a mineral. In other words, if it's not naturally occurring, it's not a mineral. So that's the second check off. Does it have a crystalline structure? Is it a solid crystalline structure? Um, and, and we can have things like petroleum or natural gas or things like that, that are naturally occurring, but they don't have a crystal structure. And so if it doesn't have a crystal, a solid crystalline structure, it's not a mineral. Check off, right? And then does it have a definite chemical composition? So uh, when we say um, that it has the exact same number of each element in the uh, compound. And so um, determined by what elements make it up and then in what proportion. So if it doesn't have a definite chemical composition, then it's not going to be an element. And so we have to ask those four questions. Now, again, Elements and minerals make up our Earth's crust. And really, there are 3,000 plus different kinds of minerals out there, which we refer to as the rock forming minerals. Um, 20 of them, so 20 of the 3,000 plus, um, are very common. And 10 of the 20 are so common that they're pretty much 90% of the Earth's crust. And so, we look at those tin, quartz, orthoclase, plagioclase, muscovite, biotite, calcite, dolomite, halite, gypsum, ferromagnesium minerals, 
olivines, pyroxenes, and amphiboles. And we will actually go through and be able to identify those um, during our minerals lab that we have in class. The two major categories pretty much are though, that the two major categories are the silicates and non-silicates. I bet you can't guess what element they, they are focused on. Hmm, I don't know. Let's think about it. silicates, non-silicates. All right, well, if you think about silicates, the silicates are silicon and oxygen. Ding, 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 silicates, right? And so when we look at that, quartz, feldspar, these are most common minerals, but they are the ones that have the silicon oxygen bond that really makes up 96% of the Earth's crust. And so we think about that and we go, okay, of all of the silicates that are out there, feldspar and quartz make up 50% of that. And so we're talking a good percentage of the Earth's crust is a feldspar, feldspar or quartz, right? So the silicates. Non-silicates, right? These don't contain silicon, right? And so um, they only make up 4% of the Earth's crust valuable, however, and we can actually classify those into six groups. Carbonates, halides, native elements, oxides, sulfates, and sulfides. And so um, pretty easy to figure out what you have based on if it's a silicate or non-silicate. Crystalline structure, right? So structure is based on chemical bonds and how atoms bond together. And a crystal is a internal pattern and there's four or six basic shapes to that. Um, and so when we look at the, the structure, uh, it, it's a lot of it's based on what we call a silicon oxygen tetrahedron. If you've ever played the game Tetris, it's based on four. Well, what we have here, why is it called a silicon oxygen tetrahedron? Is because you have four oxygen atoms that are bonded to a silicon atom that's in the middle of the structure. And so because of that, what ends up happening is the oxygen atoms will bond to other silicons in other structures and create what we call a framework or a crystal. So our isolated tetrahedral silicates, again, four bonds and ring silicates, depending on where the oxygen and silicon atoms are bonded together. So olivine um, is connecting uh, by a magnesium or an iron atom in the um, silicon oxygen tetrahedra. Now, this is a great indication because it's that greenish color um, that is a property of that. Um, next one, ring silicates. Again, uh, we can have three, four, and six sided rings sharing oxygen atoms and they basically align and give it that structure. The single chain, double chain, and sheet framework silicates, right? So if we look at a single chain, we have a tetrahedron bonded to two others, and it's creating the shared bond between the oxygen atoms. A double chain, which is our, pyro our, our amphiboles, single chain is pyroxenes, uh, our double chain is an amphibole, two single chains connected to each other. Our sheet silicates actually can break apart in sheets um, like mica. You may be heard of formica countertops. Um, each tetrahedron shares the atoms and it can actually be broken into thin sheets. Um, and then framework. And what we see the framework is uh, the quartzes and it's building this silicon oxygen tetrahedron. So that was, that was uh, pretty much the basics of minerals and how to determine whether a mineral is really a mineral or something else. And so with that, can't say thank you enough for being so awesome. I'm excited about uh, 
what we're going to do because you're going to get to to do some laboratories and uh, keep on doing what you're doing because it it makes a difference.